Something's wrong, folks, in America. Something's really wrong. Something is destroying everything that we've ever held dear in this country. What is it? Well, if you've been listening to this show, many of you already know what it is. If you've just been listening to the show for a little while, you may have some idea, but you're not quite really sure yet what's going on. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, it's all about religion. Whether you're religious or not doesn't make any difference. It's all about religion. Whether you believe in God or not, it doesn't make any difference. It's all about a big battle between good and evil. And most of it, i got to tell you, exists in the minds of men. Some of it's real. The question is, what's real? What's deception? What should we be paying any attention to? What is it that's driving us insane? Yes, something is wrong in America. The sound you hear is dripping blood. This is the start of Black Sunday. Today's newspapers, folks, are full of stories about the rampant rise in divorce rates, the increasing abuse of children by some parents, increases in the incidence of rape, pornography being read by an increasing number of people, more crimes against property, demands for world government, urgings for national borders to fall, Christian churches being closed because they will not seek licensing by the state, etc., 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 and I could go on and on and on and on and on. But why? Why are these things happening? Why are all of the legacies of the past, the family, national borders, the right to practice any chosen religion, the right to private property, among other things, under such an attack? Is it possible that there are actually people and organizations who really want to change the basic order of things? Well, my regular listeners know the answer to that. Clues to the answers to these questions, folks, can be gleaned from some comments made by people and organizations that are talking about these wide-ranging changes in the nature of our lifestyle. An Associated Press Dispatch on July the 26th, 1968, reported this, quote, New York Governor Nelson A. Rockefeller says as president he would work toward international creation of a new world order, unquote. And you thought George Bush coined that phrase? Surprise, surprise. On January the 30th, 1976, a new document called the Declaration of Interdependence was introduced to the American people and it was signed by 124 traitors. 32 senators and 92 representatives, altogether 124 traitors in Washington, D.C., and it read in part, quote, Two centuries ago, our forefathers brought forth a new nation. Now we must join with others to bring forth a new world order, unquote. And you thought George Bush coined that phrase. Surprise, surprise. Another individual who has commented is Henry Kissinger, probably the greatest traitor this nation has ever known, former Secretary of State. According to the Seattle Post Intelligence of April 18, 1975, Mr. Kissinger said, quote, Our nation is uniquely endowed to play a creative and decisive role in the new order which is taking form around us, unquote. George Bush gave the commencement address at Texas A&M University on May 12, 1989. And he used similar words as well. His speech was on the subject of Soviet-American relations, and he was quoted as saying in part, quote, Ultimately, our objective is to welcome the Soviet Union back into the world order. Perhaps the world order of the future will truly be a family of nations, unquote. Historian Walter Mills maintained that prior to World War I, Colonel Edward Mandel House, the major advisor to Woodrow Wilson, the president at the time, had a hidden motive for involving America in the war. The historian wrote this, quote, The colonel's sole justification for preparing such a batch of blood for his countrymen was his hope of establishing a new world order of peace and security, unquote. You see how these people fool themselves? <laughs> they always say that the end is peace 
and security, a world utopia. But to get it, they spill more blood than ever has been spilled in history. Each time they try to bring about their utopia, the blood runs in the streets. They're liars. They're hypocrites. They're manipulators, deceivers. They're the worshipers of Lucifer. Adolf Hitler, a socialist, and the head of the German government prior to and during the nation's involvement in World War II is quoted as saying this, quote, National Socialism will use its own revolution for the establishing of a new world order, unquote. Adolf Hitler was a socialist. Nazi means National Socialism. Hitler confided to Hermann Roschening, the president of the Danzig Senate, quote, National Socialism is more than a religion. It is the will to create Superman, unquote. And what is the number of the man? Six, six, six. You see, in the New World Order, only one man will be allowed to live. The new man, the illumined man, and the number of that man is six, six, six. You will see that number increasingly all around you. You will also begin to see pyramids increasingly all around you, and the eye in the pyramid, and the eye alone. And you'll see circles with a dot in the center. And you'll see obelisks appearing all over the place. And these are not the only signs. There are many, many, many more. They're the signs of the religion of mystery Babylon. Hitler added this thought. Quote, well, yes, we are barbarians, and barbarians we wish to remain. It does us honor. It is we who will rejuvenate the world. The present world is near its end. Our only task is to sack it, unquote. Another book on his background quoted his comments that his Nazi party had a hidden purpose, one that was not perceived by the world at large. Mr. Hitler was quoted as saying this, He who has seen in National Socialism only a political movement has seen nothing, for it is a religion. The humanist religion issued a manifesto in 1933 stating its beliefs about the world in general. It took the following position about the need for the wealthy governments to share their wealth with the less fortunate nations. It is the moral obligation of the developed nations to provide, through an international authority, economic assistance to the developed... Now that is a lie, folks. It means that it's okay for some of us to lay back and do nothing and reap the rewards of the labor of others. That's socialism. That's what it's all about. Communism, socialism, it's the same. And these people, the worshippers of Mystery Babylon, are the original communists. They are international socialism. They invented it. It is their creation. It is their dream of a world utopia. A one-world totalitarian socialist government the April 1974 issue of Foreign Affairs, the quarterly periodical issued by the Council on Foreign Relations in New York, had an article in it by Richard N. Gardner, the former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for International Organizations in the Lyndon Johnson and John Kennedy administrations, and he stated this, quote, We are likely to do better by building our house of world order from bottom up rather than from the top down. An end run around national sovereignty, eroding it piece by piece, is likely to get us to world order faster than the old-fashioned assault, unquote. Even the Communist Party is voicing similar thoughts. The People's Daily World for Thursday, March 9, 1989, contained an article written by Angela Davis. You remember her? Those familiar with Miss Davis will remember that she was the vice presidential candidate for the Communist Party a few years ago. She currently is a member of the National Committee of the Communist Party of the United States, and she is quoted in the paper as saying, quote, one underlying effect of anti-communism in this respect is to encourage a certain hesitancy to embrace solutions which call for deep structural socio-economic transformation, unquote. Another communist, Alexei Kovbulov, spoke at an evening meeting held at Windstar, Colorado, in August 1985, and gave the participants in attendance a surprise presentation. He spoke about the 12th World Festival of Youth and Students held in Moscow a few months prior to his lecture. He 
he said, quote, 